Hey everybody, Tim Keith here with Transform CX. Hoping everybody's having a good first half of the year. It's kind of hard to believe 2022 and we're in June already. Um, kind of going back and looking at some of the things that we've been talking about for the last, last year, there's no question about it that 2022 has definitely been the year of the employee. If nothing else, it dominates the headlines. It dominates every conversation I have with clients, regardless of industry. Um, I know I spent a lot of time in the contact center industry supporting a variety of verticals, and that's definitely been a hot topic for a long time. But now we see the same problem extending to literally every other industry that I engage with. I just recently had a fascinating conversation about maritime ship crewing and the challenges that the shipping companies are having getting qualified people on board who are actually interested in these positions. So a big part of this, I think, has to do with the whole acquisition process um, and looking at what do we measure in that process, how do we accomplish and know that we've achieved successful outcomes, I think are still somewhat unknown to a lot of companies. I mean, start off with job description. Um, I did a video blog on this quite a while ago, and I, you know, I, I think that so often job descriptions are sitting in ancient history. They don't aren't really reflective of the skills needed to do the job. They may describe the job, although they have a tendency to be fairly esoteric, use big words like ability to work with a dynamic team, et cetera. But very often they don't do a great job of really describing the work and the experience that someone would have to be successful or the interest they would have to be successful. Um, so right up front, it's the what is the job that we're trying to sell? What is the experience that we're trying to sell to our employees that's going to make them want to stay with us? and you know, increase their tenure, grow with us as a business. Because if we don't do that, all we're doing is setting ourselves up for churning more and more employees uh, through our machine. And guess what? When they're unhappy, they share that word with everybody. So job description, how we position that job with people, are we asking the right questions right up front? Or should we really be interested in what do they want to do? What's their area of interest? Is it caring for other people? Is it structured jobs? Is it seeing something get built? Is it effective delivery? I mean, there are a ton of things. Is there interest in fashion? Is it in music? Is it in whatever? Because if they're not in something they're interested in or you can't create that interest, they're not going to stay. It's that simple. I mean, you could throw a lot of money at them. You can throw a big job title at them. They'll do the job and eventually they'll burn out and they'll leave. Um, that may take six months. It may take 30 days or it may take a couple of years. In either case, you're paying a pretty big penalty for someone who's probably not 100% committed to what they're doing. And you're going to burn all that money again to hire a replacement. And you've lost all that time. So think long and hard about job description. Think long and hard about the selling cycle, how you're going to make somebody interested in a job, how you're going to create an effective onboarding experience to take them through whatever betting process that you may have to get them to the point of hire. And then last but not least, don't forget what happens after they get hired. Uh, we saw three things as being primary drivers to churn when we were doing some primary research last year. And they boiled down to compensation. And it's not always about getting a big salary, although everybody wants that, it's often, is there incentives within how I get paid that excite me or incent me to work differently? So whether it's a sales commission, a service commission, um, customer success metrics, these types of things can also tie people to the outcomes that they're responsible for in their, in their work. The other thing uh, beyond compensation is training. Uh, one of the biggest weaknesses across the board is effective training. Um, it, it's really hard to fathom sometimes how little the training that people are put through has to do with the job that they actually are doing. Um, we look at training in many industries. Sometimes it's 12 weeks of training, classroom style, although now we've moved to self-paced PowerPoint presentations with comprehension exams. That's great. And people are learning about the industry. They're learning about the product mix. They may be learning about feature sets and application. Okay, then they start their job and the first call they get is a very irate customer upset about something that the individual has very little control over. Okay, what did we do to train them for that? Um, have we given them skills on managing difficult conversations, uh, creating empathy and contact 
with the person that they're inter interacting with to do, teach them how to de-escalate a, a difficult situation. If we haven't, then we haven't done our job. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to burn out and leave. And here you are again, going to incur all those same costs all over again. So looking really hard at the third element also that, that people shared with us was engagement from my supervisor. So is my boss aware or engaged in what I'm doing and my success? And so often we find out that supervisors are tied up doing administrative tasks, they're doing reporting, they're not spending the time coaching their staff. Uh, I worked with a big client company that was 90-10. They were supposed to be spending 90% of their time coaching and working with their direct reports. But because of some back-end problems and the need to get reports out, they flipped it. So it's like 80-20. So a lot of new employees in that organization don't really know who their boss is, don't think their boss understands what they do. And when they're in trouble, they feel isolated. So three things, compensation, training, engagement. Think about those things as you think about talent acquisition. Um, not here to sell stuff, but we've been working a lot with a tool called Mobile Talent that we think helps address some of that problem, particularly in the selling of a position and rapid uh, getting, filling up your pipeline with qualified agents or qualified candidates. Um, if that's what you're interested in, check us out at uh, mobiletalent.com. But regardless of what tools you use, step back and really think about if you were in that position, if you were that new candidate, what experience would you be having? And if you can't say that you're having a great experience, you can't feel like you know what they're going through, you've got a potential opportunity there. Thanks, everybody. And thanks again for listening to Tim Keefe at Talent, uh, Transform CX.